Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is JSA's new series called JSA Fast Forward, where we broadcast live via LinkedIn. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA. And with me is my fabulous co-host, longtime friend and co colleague, Dean Perrine, overall guru, you know, of client strategy, lead gen marketing, and giving us a, a good laugh every now and then here at JSA. Thank you, Jamie. It is always a pleasure to be with you on Fast Forward. Um, we, I think I, this is our third Fast Forward now, uh, so I, I, I don't think they can actually take it back. I think we, we, we run this thing throughout the entire year, regardless of what anybody says. What do you think? I mean, we haven't been canceled yet, right? So I, they haven't renewed us, though. I, mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> that's to keep on going down this path for us, or beaten path, I don't know. Off the beat. It's our path, and it's going to meander, but, you know, that's, what, uh, that's why people are tuning in, right? I hope. Yeah, and did we mention this is live? So... Yeah, it is live. So let's just go ahead and jump right in, Jay. Uh, the first bit of news is Primo. You want to talk about it? Oh, cute, Dean. But <laughs> uh, yeah, Thrive, a premier provider of next-gen managed services, has entered the Florida market after acquiring Primo, P-R-E-E-M-O, a Miami-based award-winning technology services firm. That's right. The acquisition of the IT support company will provide South Florida businesses a huge boost in their technology ROI with Thrive's next-gen cybersecurity, cloud platform, and digital transformation solutions. Digital mm -hmm. transformation is everywhere right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Speaking transformations, segue, segue, Databank <laughs> has completed its migration of the Z Colo data centers. Of course, that made big news uh, a few months back. Now, over the past few years, Data Bank has really transformed itself. Uh, and we should think about this. Initially, way back when, they were just a provider of pure colo. Um, now, they are a leading edge infrastructure powerhouse, combining colocation, cloud, interconnection, as well as managed services and compliancy. So, um, a huge transformation for Data Bank. And of course, uh, completing that Z colo, big deal. Yeah, we talk about migrations as if they're just something that happens, you know, right. they're like, oh, we're just going to, you know, fit this in here and everything's going to be fine. It doesn't work that way. It takes a while to get this done. Uh, it takes even longer uh, to get it done right. So congratulations to uh, to the team at Databank and Zcolo. An example of Databank's growth in action is the company's recent completion of its migration of customers and assets. That's a lot of migration. You've got customers, you've got assets. Um, there, there's a lot to, to, to go on there. Um, from the purchase of Zcolo data center assets from Zayo Networks, we've all heard of Zayo, which added 44 data centers, 13 key interconnect locations across 23 markets in the US and the EU. So again, a big migration, a big haul there. Absolutely. So impressive. We're talking 44 new data centers. That's craziness. So shout out uh, to Databank. And also impressive, let's go to our friends over at Involta. Involta, now named VMware 2021 Partner of the Year. Yeah, let's go ahead and break that down just a bit more. Um, as VM Cloud Verified Partner in Volta, um, by the way, Jay, every time I see the word Involta, I think John Involta. Saturday night fever. Anyway, it is not <laughs> John and Volta or John Travolta. It is in Volta. In Volta. I see. I see where we go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. In Volta worked closely with VM uh, VMware to provide VMware Cloud and VMware Base SD WAN services to its national base of enterprise clients. Over the past year, VMware's unmatched support and concierge program has boosted In Volta's ability to launch and deliver its managed VMware SD-WAN solution. Yeah, yeah, wow. Uh, I can't help to think Disco now. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> go in both, tearing it up on the dance floor and other way. Okay, which makes me think of our next, next headline, getting back here, uh, tearing it up. Precision OT has been on a tear when it comes to growth and expansion as a company. And now Precision OT has announced their move into a new facility in Rochester that can accommodate so much more growth. Um, 43,000 square foot standalone facility, Rochester, New York, perfectly outfitted to meet Precision's specialized needs as a network equipment manufacturer. 
Excellent. And as you know, Jay, the uh, global supply chain woes have plagued the IT and telecom mm -hmm. infrastructure sector for some time now. It yeah. is plaguing everything right now, by the way. Um, I did get a shipped order yesterday. I got maybe a third of the things that were actually on my list because of that very same supply chain issue. But anyway, back to back to uh, fast forward. Um, uh, so, so uh, the IT, the telecom infrastructure sector for some time now, again, supply chain uh, issues and solutions that help these mission critical providers keep the pace of innovation and service delivery are paramount. They really are. And you know what? This is why Aurelian, Aurelian, yeah, I'm working on it, guys. It's the newly rebranded Telia Carrier. You know, those guys as, um, you know, number one ranked global internet backbone. Telia, Telia Carrier. All right. Well, Aurelian, their new name, has just launched expanded capabilities and upgraded capacity with our friends over at 1623 Farnham. I love it when we get to talk about 1623 Farnham because when we call them friends, uh, that ain't no lie. Every time, every time I have ever been, and they're not even a client of mine. I rarely work with them, but anytime I've ever been in front of them, what a great bunch of people. Um, I really, really enjoy them. But um, as a highly interconnected edge data center in Omaha, 1623 Farnham boosts, I'm going to, I'm going to go with our lions, our lions. I mean, we must have said it 12 different times. One of them had to be right, right? Yeah, right. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, lashed after this because we no, should sorry, this. Um, yeah. Aerolion's <laughs> ability to avert bottlenecks and deliver rapid deployments on its 800 gig route. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a new route there and it's huge. All right, so we're going from routes to, to waves. Nice transition. Thank you, writers. Light Rivers SD Waves is high score recipient for the 2022 Light Wave Innovation Reviews. We love these Light Wave uh, Innovation Awards. The company announcing that its software defined waves, SD Waves, solution was recognized among the best by the 2022 Light Wave Innovation Reviews, achieving 4.0 score in the SDN and FV technology category, which is a tough category these days. A lot of great technology out there for sure. Congratulations to all there. Um, moving along, Edge IR showcased the leading players in the Edge space in its Edge Computing Fireside Chat series. Well, and this, yeah, Fireside Chat. Yeah. I don't know that they're... Fireside Chats aren't really happening anymore. People aren't actually sitting by the fire, I don't think. Either way, we all know exactly what a fireside chat yeah. is, right? You can do a virtual background with the fire side, like fire. <laughs> I, I think that's right. <laughs> anyway, Edge, Edge IR showcased, showcased the leading players in the Edge, Edge space in its Edge Computing Fireside Chat series. In this fifth episode, Jim Davis, Edge IR editor and not the creator of the Garfield comics. Oh. And, uh, I had to do uh. it. <laughs> And Philip Marangello, we've all heard of Philip uh, over the last 12 to 18 months, he's everywhere. Uh, the chief marketing and product officer for Edge Connects discussed the Edge data center market, what has changed over the last couple of years and the ongoing drivers for Edge adoption. So check out Edge Connects in the latest Edge IR um, fireside chat series. Yeah, I really love that publication, by the way. Edge IR, they're really doing some great um, great content out of, out of that uh, uh, out of that media company. So Edge IR, yay. Um, and also, you know, check that Fireside chat out, but also we're talking friends like Philip from Edge Connects. Um, let's talk other friends. EX Square Technology has announced their partnership with Arizona Public Service Company or APS. Uh, and that's to provide commercialization services for communications infrastructure along APS's right of way. Mm -hmm. APS's communications infrastructure follows a secure 27 mile, 2700 mile fiber optic network backbone, which will pass through numerous rural, rural, a word I always stumble over, rural, underserved, uh, unserved and underserved communities along that route, ultimately mm -hmm. providing a wealth of broadband expansion opportunities throughout the majority of Arizona. Jay, we have to stop there because this is something that we're seeing a lot of, and mm -hmm. there, uh, there's a lot of folks who are um, considering or, or reconsidering or doubling down on their um, on their commitment to serving those underserved or unserved communities? And though you know the one thing that because um, working with Vive, one of the one of the things that um, I was thinking about a lot the uh, 
the, the last you know, month or so is the, the impact that that ultimately has on healthcare in these communities, mm-hmm. education in these communities, overall communications and infrastructure within these communities. It is truly like transformative when a broadband carrier comes in, provider comes in and and gives it to them and it's yeah. reliable and it's and it's high speed and you know there's so so many so many things that are positively impacted there yeah and you mentioned vive vyve broadband there too and that's that's a good example too yeah but we i think this pandemic done a lot of crazy things horrible things but uh a uh, silver lining is uh is really uh, showing everyone just the need to to bridge that digital divide, really get into those rural communities and provide the level of access so we can all work where we are, learn from where we are, um, enjoy life from where we are, and uh, um, and and a, a better quality life with healthcare, etc. So and security. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm what a what a little statement it says for our industry, our yeah. our network infrastructure. Uh, families. Uh, they've really um, been unsung heroes, I think, in this pandemic, really rising to the top to uh, to provide this type of access, um, even when it might not be the most initially cost-effective thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that there's a reason why some of these markets, I mean, it, proximics aside, there's a reason why some of these markets are not served or, or are underserved. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's kind of like a recommitment to uh, to that cause and to that purpose. And it's great that we're a part of it, too. You know, another theme that's been uh, coming up is partnering. Um, and uh, it's funny because I'm reading and editing a lot of our chapters for, for Green Air Data, a book that's coming out April 22nd. But we talk a lot about partnering in that in that book as well. Um, but here's another current headline that we got to get to, Light River and Smart Optics partnering to further enable open optical networking. Can you give us more there? I can, and I love talking uh, to our friends at Light River, more specifically, uh, Mike Jonas. I've yes. known, I feel like I've known him forever. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Mike <laughs> is is uh, he he uh, is commented at, commenting saying commenting saying he has. He maintains that in our extensive lab validations, we find that smart optics open line systems provide a market leading plug and play experience in terms of both physical connection to the network and integration into their uh, uh, Light River's end to end visibility and management within the net. Flex. So yes, partnerships and more uh, more capabilities and the new uh, the new seamlessness that end users definitely want. And I did my best to to try to do my my uh, my Mike Jonas impersonation, but his voice is yeah. it's three octaves lower than mine. Yeah, I kind of wanted to hear like Mike Jonas's deep baritone voice coming from you. So I don't know, maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right. <laughs> next up. Significant company milestones. We got to get to it. T5 data centers. You know them, of course, as they build, manage, and operate their own data centers, as well as on behalf of many of its customers. So, uh, big name in data center construction and management. They just celebrated 2 million worked hours without one lost time accident. That's big. Uh, and, and this is a, a result of the company's proactive safety culture, as well as having processes in, in place to help ensure that culture is ingrained in the team at every level. This impeccable safety record, record coupled with 100% uptime, delivers on T5's promise of forever safe and forever on. Yeah, wow. that's, a, that's a big promise, too. And, and mm-hmm. they keep to it. It's, it's pretty, pretty incredible. So here's my question for you. Dino, do you ever get FOMO? Is that a thing for you? You know, the feeling that you get when you're missing out on something? I want to say no, but the answer is probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know like social FOMO. Oh my gosh, I wish I was there. I missed out on this you know, particular memory with my friends, etc. But there's also a thing called IT FOMO. Whole different story. The sinking feeling you get when you miss out on key digital transformation opportunities, of course. Yeah, no, that makes sense. IT FOMO, fear of missing out on uh, on those kind of digitally transformative kinds of things. But fortunately, organizations that are searching for this for these top tips uh, for meeting their digital transformation needs can find all the answers in our friends at 1623 Farnham's latest ebook. So check that out on IT FOMO. So no mo FOMO. Thanks Ooh. to our friends at 16. <laughs> 
Okay, really? No more. All right. Anywho, let's pretend we don't hear that. And the headlines, once again, going back to script, uh, in Volta, now recognized as the 2022 Best in Class, K-L-A-S, uh, in that partial IT outsourcing category, really uh, quite a distinction. Um, and this is published by a report, uh, Research and Insights, from the firm Class, K-L-A-S. Uh, so class, best in class. Um, and uh, and this research in, uh, firm recognizes providers who excel at enabling healthcare with the technology and support needed to improve patient care like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So some, some great uh, Involta shout outs there. Yeah, Jim Bowie, I believe I got his last name correctly. He, the president of Involta uh, has said that the team's dedication to innovation and solving complex healthcare challenges continues to prevail from developing from developing industry-leading solutions to supporting regulatory frameworks to delivering unmatched customer service. So congratulations to uh, to Jim and the uh, and Volta folks. And you know what, let's move to Northern California. Big news coming out of Silicon Valley. Bandwidth IG now adding 40 kilometers of new fiber connectivity to the San Fran Bay area, which mm -hmm. is big stuff. Yeah, with this news, the Silicon Valley area now has additional dark fiber route, a, an additional dark fiber route connecting Santa Clara to San to South San Jose. So this is this is pretty significant. Yeah, especially that area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of folks needing that. Um, also, speaking big news, bandwidth IG big. Uh, okay, big news. Uh, moving over to our friends over at Connected to Fiber. Who? Uh, what? They're not our friends anymore. That is so not true. It is that they are our same friends, but new name. They rebranded to Connect Base, connected to fiber now, Connect Base. And that aligns really more with their entire spectrum of network connectivity options, which includes wireless, copper, coax, and fiber, all available on their automated Connect World platform. Same great people, new brand. It looks yeah, real good right. too. So, uh, Jay, why don't you tell us where the uh, the JSA team is going to be next? Oh my goodness, yes, everywhere, Dino, everywhere. We are taking over the planet, like our clients. Um, I think our next field trips are going to be at Channel Partners in Vegas. So, particularly fun if you have a channel program you want to promote, we will be there to help you. Channel Partners Vegas, and then of course Monaco. Can't pass up a flight to Monaco. Data Cloud uh, will be happening in April, and then two weeks later, ITW near DC in May. Yeah. So um, as always, if you would like to schedule a meeting with us or our attending clients at any of these <clears throat> events, uh, send us a note at, again, my favorite URL, say hi at JSA.net. <laughs> say hi. Yes. And we are here at JSA, always connecting you with more industry news and trends, upcoming events, virtual live across our blogs, newsletters, those virtual roundtables. We have one coming up on Thursday, podcasts, now LinkedIn Live, hopefully, if LinkedIn doesn't kick us off, uh, to keep us all more <laughs> informed so that we can grow this industry together. Uh, yeah, being kicked off of LinkedIn is entirely plausible. Uh, so so yeah. hopefully we will see you all <laughs> next month. Jamie, it is always a pleasure to see you. And thanks uh, to all of you for tuning in to JSA Fast Forward. And as always, friends, stay safe and happy networking.